Welcome back to the Weber Kettle Series brought to you by Fogo Charcoal here on Chud's Barbecue, everybody. My name is Bradley Robinson, and today we're going to talk about how to accessorize your Weber to maximize your grill for hot and fast grilling as well as low and slow barbecue cooking. Coming up! Always keep your Weber clean, folks. The simplest way to use a Weber kettle is to take a chimney full of charcoal and just dump it straight in, put the top grate on, and start cooking. And that's great if you're cooking a lot of food and you want to fill this whole thing up with chicken thighs or skirt steaks or something like that. But the more preferred method is to do two zone cooking, meaning you're going to put all of your charcoal on one side, giving you a hot zone over here and a cold zone over here, which is great for a typical sear, where you're going to sear your meat off till you get the crust you want, then move it over to the cold side, put the lid on, and let that residual heat gently bring your meat up to the desired internal temperature. Temperature. As opposed to the reverse sear, which is the opposite, where you bring it up to temp over here and then sear it hot and fast to get the crust you like. And that's the preferred method as of late because to get a really good crust and sear on your meat, you really want the meat to be as dry as possible because moisture is the enemy of a good sear. So by bringing it up low and slow on this side, it's going to dry the surface of the meat out, giving you a really nice crust once it's time to sear it off. And you get the added benefit of throwing some wood chunks or wood chips in there to smoke your meat while it comes up to temp. But having all your charcoal pushed over to one side isn't very precise and it's not going to get as hot as it could. Enter the slow and sear. This thing is great. It's basically a little barrier where you can put all your charcoal in. So as opposed to all your charcoal spilling out and over, you can build it up and get a lot more coal in there, making this side a lot hotter. But also because it's got a very firm baffle on it, you're also going to maximize your space for indirect heat on this side. Not to mention, it's got a removable water pan in here which does two things. First, it's going to create even more of a barrier between your hot zone and your cold zone because there's an inch of water between the two. And it's also going to add some nice moisture to your cook chamber, which on a small cooker like this is a really great thing. So if your cooks are getting a little dry around the edges or some burn spots on them, adding some moisture to your cook chamber is a great way to go about fixing that. The only downside is when you put your Weber kettle grate back on, you only have a few inches of access over here, making it so accessing your entire coal bed can be a bit difficult. Luckily, the folks at SNS Grills who make the Sloan Sear thought of that as well. This is the grate they make that is perfectly designed to work with the slow and sear. And as you can see, you now have full access to all of your coals. Not to mention, it's made for easy spinning which is super convenient. The other one can kind of do it, but the handles stick down a little bit and it gets caught on the nubs. But this is great because if you have your steak over here during a reverse here, all you need to do is spin it around right over the hot part and get that perfect crust. Couldn't be simpler. But also because of this wall here, you can fit a lot more charcoal in coming up vertical, which is gonna get your coals closer to the grate, giving you that incredibly hot sear that you're after. And if you want it even hotter, just pop out the water pan and you can fit even more coal in there. When it comes to low and slow cooking for stuff like brisket, ribs, pork butts, things like that, the slow and sear works really well because it's that perfect baffle to really separate your hot zone from your cold zone so you don't end up getting crispy edges on your meat. But it's still not as convective as you'd like because especially with something like a brisket, you really want to have perfect directed airflow going over your meat so nothing gets overly smoked. And the reason you're not getting the proper airflow is because those vents on the bottom are coming straight up. So to fix that, you can get the SNS drip and roast pan. This thing is multifunctional, which is something I love in grilling tools because you can pop it on this top rack and use it as a griddle. You can also pop this on to make it a nice roasting pan, but you can also pop it in the bottom here, which is not going to act as a drip pan. But more importantly, when it comes to low and slow, it's also going to block that airflow from coming straight up from the vents to being forced to come underneath through the slow and sear to get those coals nice and hot. So now instead of all the airflow coming up, it's going underneath this baffle through the charcoal and then come right across the meat, which is exactly what you want. They also make the same thing, but made out of cast iron. This is the dripping griddle, which is great because again, you can use this as a really big cast iron on top of your slow and sear fits perfectly right on top but it also acts really well as an air baffle for when you're doing low and slow cooks and because it's made out of cast iron it's going to add a lot of thermal mass to your cooking chamber giving you more even temperatures and this is great because back in the day when i used to cook briskets on weber kettles all the time i would usually just put a foil pan or some tin foil down there and it didn't look good and didn't work very well so this is a perfect setup for doing low and slow barbecue cooking on the weber kettle <laughs> But there's still one problem, and that's the matter of this thermometer placement. As I mentioned in last week's video, we've got our fire over here, we've got our dripping tray slash air baffle on this side, and we really want to have the air vent on this side over the meat as well. Again, that's just to support good convective airflow coming up through the coals and then going over the meat and right on out of here. But maintaining temperatures is going to be really hard because the thermometer is now right above the coals. But I think I have a fix for that as well.
And there we have it. Got this little tell true grill thermometer on there. And it's on the same side as the vent, right where we want it to be. And it's even at meat level. So we're gonna get some real accurate reads on what our meat is cooking at. And there we have it, folks. The ultimate Weber setup for cooking. And yes, the hook still does work. When it comes to lighting your charcoal for a low and slow cook, you got several options. One popular method is known as the minion method that I used to use all the time back in the day. That's where you pour a bunch of unlit charcoal into the bottom of the slow and sear and then put some lit charcoal on top. And basically the principle behind that is that it works the opposite of a charcoal chimney. The charcoal chimney, you light it on the bottom and because heat rises, it's naturally gonna burn upwards, giving you a really hot fire really quickly. So by flipping it upside down and putting the lit charcoal on top of the unlit charcoal, it's gonna slowly burn down, giving you hours of low and slow heat. Another method is to put a big pile of charcoal in there and just light it on one side. That way it's going to burn kind of like a fuse called the snake method and it's just going to slowly burn across, again giving you hours of low and slow cooking. But the problem I have with both of those methods is that if you have all of that charcoal in there, there's always a chance that the whole thing could just ignite if there's a gust of wind or something like that or you lose control. And once you have all of that charcoal lit, you're going to have a raging fire in there that you might not be able to control. So what I like to do... We start out with a little bit of lit charcoal and then because this reservoir is so big we can actually use the yellow bag fogo super premium big chunks and just kind of toss those in like logs periodically as the temperature starts to drop. Basically I'm using the same principles as an offset smoker where you're just going to throw in more logs as the fire starts to die. Not the best option because you're going to have to babysit it more but I think it's great for a beginner because you don't have to worry about all of the charcoal lighting up and having a big flare up happen. As you can see, we got our fire going and this little thermometer on front is working, holding right around 250, 275, which is right where we want to be for most of our cooks. But you may notice, not much smoke coming out. There are two options when it comes to wood for your Weber kettle, wood chips and wood chunks. And much like the yellow bag and the black bag from Fogo, the real difference is in the size where wood chips are really tiny and these wood chunks are well, chunks. And they both have a time and a place. Wood chips is something I'll throw on if I just want to add a little bit of smoke for a short amount of time. Something like if I'm doing a reverse sear on a steak or something like that. Or I just want a little kiss of smoke. Because this stuff tends to burn up really quick. Only gives you a little bit of flavor. Where this stuff is going to burn a lot longer and a lot more predictably. Because it's, you know, an actual chunk of wood. You can also soak both of these so they'll smolder and last a little bit longer. And you can kind of stifle the flare-ups that way. I tend not to do that very often. Because I'll compensate with how much charcoal I put in if I know I'm going to be throwing in wood chunks or wood chips. But either way, you can get these pretty much everywhere. They come in a lot of different flavors and types of wood. I believe this is pecan and this is oak. So for something like a low and slow cook, I'm definitely going to stick with chunks and just pop them in periodically until we get some nice good blue smoke flowing through there. And maybe if I need a quick temp bump, I'll throw some wood chips in there as well. <laughs> As you can see, when we first throw this wood chunk in, it's gonna be some billowing smoke a little bit. If you're really concerned about it, you can throw it in and leave the lid open for a little bit until some of that smoke burns off, but I'm usually not too concerned about it. Because after just a few moments, we've got that nice clean blue smoke that we're all after coming out of there, which is gonna give us some wonderful flavor over a really long cook. Controlling temperature on the Weber kind of just takes time and feel, but it's pretty self-explanatory. It's all about judging it by how much coal you have in there and then playing around with the air intake in the exhaust. Generally speaking, I'll usually start with the intake first. That way you still have plenty of output and you're not trapping in too much dirty smoke. But that's the beauty of doing a long cook is you have plenty of time to mess around with it. And because it's such a and because it's such a small cook chamber, it holds heat pretty well. All right, y'all, that is it. That is how to set yourself up for success on the Weber kettle for hot and fast grilling as well as low and slow barbecue cooking. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button and liking the video. It helps out a lot. Drop a comment down below letting me know what you want to see me cook next. Big shout out to Felgo Charcoal. Thank you for sponsoring this series. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.